Now we are recording. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session as part of the DPI Arts Education Team's Making Lemonade series. This is Dancing Alone But Together, Making It the Best It Can Be. Just a quick note that we will be recording this webinar and posting it to our webinar archive. You can also click on the link to the bit.ly that we've shared in the chat to follow along with the slide deck and access later if you wish. This is really going to be your resource to take with you. We will not get through everything in the slide deck today. So you wanna really hang on to it so that later you can come back and go through all of these resources and really digest what's gonna be helpful for you. Please take a moment to notice the graphics on this first page here. Um, they are clickable links for you to find our Google site homepage. This page contains updates and links to register for any upcoming webinars, a webinar archive, of our recordings and a page devoted to remote learning resources. There's tons of other resources on there that you may ha find helpful in your planning uh, for this fall. You can also sign up for our listserv to receive our newsletters in your email and follow us on Facebook uh, for updates as well. All right, I'd like to take a moment to introduce ourselves to you. My name is Sayward Grinley. I am your dance and visual arts consultant for DPI. I just transitioned into this role in May, so I've been learning everything remotely too, uh, from teaching dance and dance education in the college setting for the past eight years. Prior to that, I taught in the public schools as well. My arts education team member is Brandon Rader. He is your music and theater arts consultant who started in September after teaching in the public schools for 10 years. He and I work closely as a team and we each have extensive experience in all four arts areas. So we really work collectively on all of the areas together. Um, he and I both also have experience with virtual teaching as well as virtual learning um, during our graduate programs. And although she's not here with us today, our section chief for social studies and arts education is former theater educator, Dr. Lori Major Carlin, and she really leads us with a solutions focused mindset. So we are very excited to have special guests here with us today to share her tips and successes of teaching dance remotely. She has put the social emotional needs of her students as her priority in her virtual dance instruction and has continued to motivate, challenge, and encourage her students in innovative ways. She's gonna share those with us today. Please welcome 2017-18 Wake County Public School Teacher of the Year and 2018-19 Magnet Schools of America Region 4 Teacher of the Year, Betsy Graves. I'm going to let her say hello quickly now. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. As you said, I'm Betsy Graves, and I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, and Dance Director at Broughton High School. And I'm super excited to talk with you today, and hopefully you'll leave with Something you can take back to your program. Thank you so much for having me. Just a few housekeeping reminders that we do encourage video, but it is not required. Feel free to use your chat feature for any questions or technical issues and Brandon or I will respond. Please remember to stay muted so that we don't get any extra background noise and we can all hear the presentation. We do have it on, whoop, we should have it on closed captioning. Whoops, <laughs> we'll be in a second um, to follow along. But if for any reason you cannot hear or get your sound to work, remember that we are recording. You can always come back and watch the recording for anything you've missed. If you notice, if we notice that you have, may have accidentally unmuted, we might send you a little gentle reminder. Take a moment to just look over these features one more time. This is our state mandated program of WebEx. So here you can find your chat feature and your mute and uh, to change your video layout as well. Um, the agenda for today will also include a Q&A if there is time, but you are always welcome to stay a few minutes after the session to ask additional questions if we're running short on time. Today, we plan to help you gain confidence in the North Carolina Arts Standards rem uh, teaching remotely, but also discuss possible day-to-day -day opera operations, virtual production tips, and enrichment ideas for engagement and social-emotional needs of students. All right, I'm going to pass it over to Brandon now. Hi, so welcome again to all of our arts education who have joined us today. I think it's really important to um, remind ourselves through all of these webinars that we are not alone, even if we're the only educator in our content regularly at school. 
or the only educator in our home or the only educator in, on our entire block um, these days. So uh, North Carolina Public Schools serves 1.55 million students in 2,500 public schools across 386 public school units. And in those 2,500 public schools, 7,026 teachers teach the four arts areas. And though the North Carolina General Assembly lawmakers create the laws and the State Board of Education creates the policies which impact your job, it's the job of DPI to create instructional resources to help you succeed in teaching your students. Sayward and I don't actually get to make any of the policies or decisions, but we are here to assist you in any way that we can. So this series has been specifically designed to help our teachers succeed when the decision making process is out of our control. We're also happy to share the newly legislated arts high school graduation requirement. For the first time ever, every student in North Carolina will experience the arts starting those students entering grade six in 2022. In North Carolina, we teach within the comprehensive arts education framework and the three components of the CAE are independent and are found completely necessary. That's arts education, arts integration, and arts exposure. Um, remember that, oops, this is not <laughs> an arts or an education crisis. We're in the middle of a, a public health crisis. So even though we were caught a little off guard in the spring, we can be purposeful in the way that we are planning and building our students up for success this fall. One framework that might interest you is the instructional design principles for remote teaching and learning. Um, this was designed by the Friday Institute and DPI together and was rolled out last April. It really takes in mind all of the parts um, or all the different facets that we need to pay attention to when our students are remote learning. One such facet is social and emotional learning, and we want to make sure that um, we are not just teaching our kids content, but that they are able to take in that content. So at the end, this is my favorite quote here. It says, ensuring that students have opportunities to continue to see their place in our school community is imperative. I promise you, Betsy's going to talk a lot about that today. Addressing SEL is not optional. It is critical to the supporting or supporting our students and their learning. So I just want to touch really quickly about this wheel right here is from PASCAL, which is the Collaborative uh, Association, I believe, um, for social and emotional learning. And CASEL has identified five core competencies that you can see in the center here of self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision making. Once this, or and, and the student is working on those five competencies and is surrounded and helped along by um, their classroom environment, their school environment, and then homes and communities. In recognition, especially in how the arts build community, a lot of our partners already have materials that speak to the social and emotional well-being of our students. So this, is, this picture here can seem a little bit overwhelming until you see that it's just simply a layover of the previous picture. All of the um, the little dots inside take you to a video of that core competency, and then the D stands for dance. And so you would click on all the little Ds to get ideas of how to best serve your students um, in dance in that core competency without stepping outside of your content. All of the graphics along the outside um, all speak to programs that have that already exist um, that. Uh, are from the homes and communities and schools that can help support your students as well. So if you are, are if your curiosity is piqued, um, you can access more about the way that North Carolina as a whole is addressing SEL in every single content area by visiting this link right here. Um, we're on slide 17 of the slide deck, which again, you can follow along with this bit.ly link down at the bottom. Um, so, I think that this is a really exciting time because we can try to do the things that we've always done, except just use technology to do them, or we can take a look at how to do things completely differently. And so we're on the precipice of a brand new era, um, and I think that it's a, a wonderful time to be a teacher. Um, students are great problem solvers, and um, especially as we are facing how to solve our own problems, it's a really great idea to involve students in the creative problem solving 
process so that they can engage in that as well to become uh, lifelong artists as well. And remember that we can do this. Um, the way that we act and the language we use affects our students. So if we are positive, excited, and energetic about this new modus of learning and this new focus on other areas of your art form, your students will be too. And if you are negative and frustrated, so will your students. However, I promise you that if you get anything from Betsy's session today, you will not feel negative in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> um, one quick plug for the North Carolina virtual public schools. They have been doing professional development sessions to help their peers who are used to brick and mortar settings make the transition online. Um, by clicking this link here to the archive webinars, you can see um, all of the sessions that they have already put on. And you can you can download the presentation slides and watch the recordings. They cover Canvas, um, effective online teaching, figuring out how to give feedback, meeting the needs of diverse learners, and communicating and engaging your students. So they're really great resources that you can come back to. All right, with any further ado, I am happy to pass this off to Ms. Betsy Graves. Hi, everyone. Um, once again, I'm Betsy Graves. You've heard me like 12 times now, but you know, I needed to introduce myself. Hello, Amanda. I just saw you. Um, and I am the dance director in Raleigh, North Carolina at Broughton High School. And they wanted me to start off just to um, give you a background of my program, just so you know where I'm coming from. I am fully aware, just like all of you, you're all educators. So hopefully today will just be an opportunity for you to take something and um, use it as a resource. I definitely don't have all the answers and there's been lots of like hiccups since March, but there's been so many successes. So hopefully today you'll be able to take some of those. But my program has 180 students in it and we go from dance one through international baccalaureate. At Broughton, we divide that into two dance one classes, one dance two, three class, a dance three proficient, a dance four advanced that we call dance ensemble, and then an IB dance class, which we call dance company. We also offer independent study dance and a dance team, a hip hop team, and a tap club. At Broughton, they audition every year for their next placement to see where they will best fit. The reason I say that is it's just um, important for you to know what my program looks like so you can see if things can match with you as well. So as we move forward, we're going to go um, and we're gonna talk about three different areas, day-to-day -day operations, virtual production, and enrichment experiences. As I've done this um, webinar a couple of times practicing. I'm going to try to go through day to day operations a little bit quicker so we can get to the two areas that I feel are the um, the lemonade that we've made since virtual Academy. I did that for all of you added in the title, um, the virtual since we went virtual, but day -to -day operations are how it begins. So for day to day operations, we're going to look at class time and scheduling for virtual production. I'm going to show you a highlight reel and then I'm going to take you step by step through the process of what I did when we did our virtual show. And then for enrichment opportunities, I'm hopefully going to provide you some opportunities and experiences that you could take back to just continue to grow your program during this very unprecedented time. Within each of those areas, we can go to the next slide now. Um, within each of those areas, I'm gonna focus them in these three categories. So the first one is what we at Broughton created in the spring, my students and I created for what we consider the three C's of virtual education. And if you're in Wake County, there's been a lot of, you know, there's all different types of letters that we've created for our different um, forms of education. So we decided to go with the three C's, connect, create, and compassion. How do we connect to each other, ourselves, and the community? How do we continue to create during this time, even though we are alone? But together and how do we continue to show compassion, which is the most important as we give grace and um, love to each other during this um, new phase of our life. And then my personal philosophy is always about reaching the whole student. So hopefully it will come back to that within each area. So at the end of each slide, there will be a quote from a student that is a rising senior or I guess they're a senior now um, at Broughton about their experience during virtual um, in these different areas. So you're welcome to read those so you can hear from the student. Um, and then we're all here because we're dancing in our bedrooms, our kitchens, our bathrooms, our laundry rooms, our backyards. I I've seen roofs everywhere. We're dancing everywhere. And while we are in different little screens and little squares, we are still together. 
And so I want just to continue to remember that even though we're alone, we can still continue to create art and um, continue to connect with each other and just show a new way of doing it. So without further ado, we're going to keep going to day to day operations. Um, it, March 12th, 13th, uh, our lives changed. You know, that was the last day that we set foot in public school with our students, or at least where I am, that's what happened. And I was one of those, I was like, we'll be back in May, but that's because I don't really watch the news. And so, um, however, we knew we weren't gonna be back right away. So the first thing I did was I got my leaders together, my student leaders, because in order for you and for me, I thought to continue on with this, an air of thing that I've never done, never taught virtually, never created virtual shows, never you know done this. How are we going to do it? We're going to have to have student buy-in. The only way that we can make it happen is if the students are are buying into what we're what we're saying. And in the end, it's all about the students anyways, and so it should be what they want to do. So I met with them on that first Monday, and I said, "What do you want out of this? What do you want to do?" And they unanimously all said, we want to keep going. We want our schedule. We want our normal, our, our normal. And we knew it was not going to be normal, but being able to have a consistent rehearsal schedule, being able to have master classes still, being able to have check-in times or Pictionary on Google, you know, things that are their normal, being able to see each other's faces are what they wanted. They wanted something to be accountable for. So we went on and they decided they wanted to continue on with their student rehearsals. And I was clear from the beginning that you might be making a dance that never is performed. And I said, I need you to understand that that is different. That's a different approach. You're always usually working for a show. So you need to know that this might not happen. And at that time, I thought that we might do a show, you know, in the summer or in the fall. And as we went further on, we figured out that wasn't going to happen. And that's what we'll get to in the virtual production. So a few lesson plans I've um inserted this google drive that is open to all of you and if it doesn't let you get in you can just request and i will take you i will give you access and in here there's just lots of different uh, resources and activities i did since march and my students did and you're welcome to use all of them none of them anything you want but there's different events and activities that we did to keep it fresh that a lot of students came up with there's student work examples there's some lesson plan um ideas and then a tutorial we do tutorials and how we'll talk about that and then some videos of teaching. So um, back to the slides, because that you can go back and just go through that and look at whatever you want to look at in that. Um, finding the students voice and leadership and figuring out what they want to do will then take you in to be able to be more successful. So we had student led rehearsals that were successful because they were um, focused and they wanted to do it. It wasn't something I was forcing into them. And then one lesson plan that I want to go into more detail about was a class that we did for improv. It was the second, I think it was the second or third week of our quarantine. And we, one of our master classes was an improvisation class. And I had no idea what I was doing. I had no, I'd never done this before um, or anything like that, but we love improv at Broughton. So we decided let's go for it. And um, it ended up being awesome because we used you know how you can pin people on your Google Meets or on Zoom, you can pin. And that is a feature that I highly recommend as dancers you use. When you pin, if I pin Brandon, then Brandon only sees me and then he can pin me and I only see him. And we did an improv exercise where when Brandon was dancing, I was watching and he would stop in a position and I would pick up from that position and start dancing and doing my improv. And we're going back and forth and exchanging movement ideas and only seeing that one person. And as the teacher, you can still have everybody up on the screen. So you're seeing everyone dancing and this whole like whole just improv jam going on, but they're only seeing each other and having this in intimate connection with one person and they said i can't believe we just created through a screen and they did mirroring as well but they just different inner um different interactions with their improv i've also used the pinning of doing techniques so today i was doing dance intensive for my dance team and we were doing turns everyone's favorite but they pinned each other and they're able to watch one person and that then they're able to give personal feedback to that one person so using the breakout rooms for them to go off and work without you like you do in class, using the pin, uh, pinning allows them to just feel like it's not just a big class, you in front the whole time, because that's not how we live our life typically in dance. So anything we can do to try to uh, get it back to how it is typical will be better, I think. Uh, for compassion, the last part I'm gonna talk about for day to day is creating that community, which right now I think is, is the most important part. 
Um, the way we do it at Broughton is we create family groups. And at the beginning of the year, there will be about eight people within each group of the program, and there will be a leader, so a senior, you know, typically a senior that's in charge of that family group, and they will be in charge of creating, I'm um, sending out information every single week. So a text through their message, whatever they choose for their message. Um, and they also will create monthly bonding experiences. Now, right now they will all be virtually, but you can do Netflix parties and you can do Zoom parties where you play Pictionary. And these aren't things that you as a teacher have to be at. These are things for students to be bonding with each other and asking the questions to the upperclassmen and also allowing those seniors that have waited till their senior year to be the leaders to still get to have that leadership role this year, even though we won't be in person. So we're gonna go to the next slide, which is just a recap. And this is just so to make sure that you know what we were um, we talked about. And one area that I didn't speak on is about class etiquette. Just like any other year, you want to look at how you are going to um, have your class run. So the first week of school, creating those boundaries and creating those expectations. And the cameras being on are extremely helpful in dance, of course. And I know that, that there's privacy issues with that as well. So uh, one idea I came up with, and I don't have all the ideas for this one, um, is have your students video themselves during the class and have them send you the video so you can give them personal feedback. But if you can encourage and try to create a space where they want to put their cameras on, it definitely makes it a lot more fun and it makes it so they don't have to do as many written assignments. That's what I tell them. Um, and then I've just listed some materials there that have worked for me to create um, the best space possible to be able to teach. And I'll say a bigger screen, the biggest screen you can have does help the eyes and does help being able to see um, the actual alignment of your dancers. Uh, and the reason I say two devices, my last thing about materials is one can be videoing you from the back, which is the easiest way to learn and dance. All my students have told me, I talked to them before I did this assignment, did this webinar, because then it's like they're in class. But if you have a second video in front of you, then you can still see the dancers. So you still see them dancing, but then they can see you from the back, which just makes sure, which just allows you not to feel like you're just facing back to them the entire time. So we're going to move on to uh, the virtual show. When they asked me to do this webinar, uh, it was a big part was because of the virtual production. As I said earlier, we did a concert and the concert was because we were like, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to be in person. We need to have closure. So we put a virtual show on. I've linked the whole show at the end that you can definitely see. Um, but we're going to show you a reel right now. And in this reel, you're going to see choreography by um, students and by guest artists and by myself. You're also going to see uh, different types of editing, which I think is the reason people are here to see the different ways you can edit and you're going to see different locations. If you see anything in a studio that it was all choreographed and it was all um, practiced before we left March 13th and they were full dances that weren't going to get to be performed. So we edit it in that way. So I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. Betsy, I think somehow we've lost sound. Hmm. Did you see it though? Yeah, we heard some of the sound, so it might just be glitching. Um, okay. If there's if there's power issues, like my power went off and I came back on. So. Okay, we'll try that again and see. Y'all can tell me.
Thank you, Betsy. Yes. Okay. So it was um, extremely weird to do a reel of what I kind of consider a reel. Um, and so, but I hope you got to see some of the editing. We're going to go through now how to go about it and the different ways that I went through it. Of course, this is going to be very abridged and quick, but I'm happy to work with any of you in the future if you have questions about that. Sorry, I keep looking at my little screen. I need to look at this screen. Um, so, um, that was just a reel of that, and at the end of the sh at the end of this, there's the full concert you can watch, so you can see the different ones. And most of that was uh, edited by students. So when you're going through the virtual concert, just like any other production, you create a concept for each dance. Um, it's a little bit different because you're creating a concept that's going to be done through a screen, not through in person uh, performance, but it can just give you all types of ideas because you can play with editing, you can play with zooming in and out, and you can play with all different vantage points as well. Creating a rehearsal schedule and sticking to it, making it so that the experience of creating a virtual piece is still as important as creating an in-person piece. I think that is something that um, we learned in the spring is it takes just as much time and energy. So not being like, oh, well, we're putting it on the screen. We don't have to have as many rehearsals. I think you have to have more. So you have to be more consistent. Um, and then once you have the rehearsals and you teach the choreography, if the choreographers, if it's you or your students explaining filming plans. So in the Google Drive, you'll find a whole filming plan folder and there's different examples of that. And I think that that helps each person know how they're supposed to record it, what angle, what location, what they should wear, things like how specific you want to get, and then have the students submit the recordings. When you submit the recordings, you want at least a week, I would say, to be able to work on the dance afterwards, um, virtual, like with your editing. Don't be like, okay, I'm gonna get it Monday and then it needs to be edited by tomorrow night. That does not work. Um, I mean, it would, but it would be, you'd be pulling your hair out. So give yourself time and more time than you think. And then um, once all of it is edited, you would then send it to who the final person is and they would put it together. So let's talk about the different areas. For most of my students, they edited in iMovie. So you just get iMovie, but this is what it looks like. I'm just trying to make sure you, you see what things look like. Um, Okay, um, and then for the teacher, when you're putting a full show on, I invested in what we call Final Cut Pro, and Final Cut Pro allows you to um, edit at a larger scale and allows you to have more storage and it has a lot more features. So you would download it um, and then you can do all different types of things. This is where you go to purchase them, um, but then if you want to um, let me get to Final Cut Pro so you can see it. <laughs> Talk amongst yourself as I share a different content. 
Okay, so this is um, Final Cut Pro. This is what it looks like. This was actually what we were doing for the reel. So it's just, this is, you can upload all types of videos. It all stays right here in your um, memories and things like that. That's a missing file, so don't look at that. Um, but then over here, you can do different titles. You can also add zoom ins. There's just a lot of different things, but you can also do the grid action, which is what a lot of people, which is what a lot of people like to do. And so that is an area here. And then when you go to import it, you would go up here and you import it. And I encourage um, or share it. I encourage you to go to Vimeo and I'm going to show you that now. So that's Final Cut Pro. Okay, so then Vimeo looks like this. And the reason I encourage this is that when it goes to YouTube for your live performance, YouTube will take it down because of copyright, but Vimeo, you can keep it here forever um, and people can visit it anytime. So these are ones that I sent links to for you to be able to watch. And when you go to the area that is the live stream, which is StreamYard, the third place that I'm gonna show you, you create a broadcast and you would enter in Okay, you would enter into the broadcast, and as you enter in, um, it takes you to what is called the backstage, just like you are normally backstage for your shows or wherever you are. And then you can add yourself in, um, and you can take things off. This is a brand, so that was taken away. So this is what they see on YouTube. It's linked to YouTube. Livestream is extremely user friendly um, and it's one of those things that I can go even more detail into it. But if you go to it and you just play around with it, you get to do a, um, it's really easy. You set up an account and you get straight to your YouTube. Once you're in here before the night of your show, you can play around with brand and you can play, play around with banners. So if it's in the middle of the show and you're like, I want people to give money, I made this banner and it goes across the the screen and all I had to do is click on it. So you just make them before you go. Or if at the end you're doing your thank yous, you can click on who you're thanking and they come up and you can be talking. Um, you can add pictures. So if I was giving an award and this person won the award, I had it there. And then at the bottom, I had her name go across. So things like that, you can have a logo, you can do different colors. And this is something you can just play around with before you put the show on. So. Now let's go back to here. Okay, so when you're doing all of this, it does take time, but first off, students know a lot. Students can help you with the process. Students can help you um, with the editing and things of that sort. And it really um, makes it a lot easier when they're involved, but choose a, choose a platform. I encourage, I will just say that Final Cut Pro allowed me to do more things with editing. Um, and then Stream, StreamYard was just um, so user-friendly that that's what I would encourage for streaming it to your YouTube channel. Okay, our last area that we're going to speak about is enrichment opportunities. This is the area that I think is um, the lemonade. Um, and I can answer questions. Uh, the chat questions I'll answer at the end for sure. Um, so for connect um, master classes, so we create we really like master classes at Broughton, and we chose to um, continue on with that throughout the semester. And so we had different uh, teachers and alum and things like that. Um, but the thing that I would say that is the coolest about virtual and the thing that would have never happened if it wasn't virtual is the amount of people that you can bring in that are in different locations. So you can bring so many people in from New York or Los Angeles or across the globe or your alums that are at college, reach out to them because artists are really looking for ways to support each other and it's a way for us to support them. And it is a way for you to be able to learn as you watch those artists. And this spring I created the professional summer series. And so every Wednesday, because students asked for dance classes over the summer, we had two master classes every um, Wednesday that they could sign up for and they were teachers in New York and there's just no way that that could have happened 
um, if it hadn't been virtual, uh, because I couldn't have afforded to bring that many people to North Carolina, but I could use them. I could use them uh, through the screen. Uh, and then reach out to your alums. So many alums are looking for ways to uh, stay dancing and stay engaged, and I'm sure that they will um, be happy to give you classes. If you're an elementary school teacher, reach out to the local high schools and see if there's a high school student that will do a live class. For CREATE, when we go to the next slide, I'm going to go in more detail, but um, I host an event called the North Carolina Dance Adjudication, and this year we are planning to go virtual. Um, and I'm going to explain how we're going to do that at the next slide, but that's the creation part. And then for COMPASSION, this is a time that I feel like we can collaborate and connect with people more than ever. Um, and I think that it's even more important to collaborate and connect. Uh, whether you're reaching out to other dance programs, whether it's that you're reaching out to other uh, arts programs, dance programs, or athletics, all those things you could be having combined classes, maybe a theater teacher at one school and a dance teacher at another school do something together for musical theater. Um, reach out and just collab and you know find ways to connect, whether it's middle school teaching elementary school or high school teaching middle school and elementary school, providing these community classes to show how far dance can connect people and provide a community. I think that that is so important and something we're planning on doing this fall is to reach out to all the elementary schools and middle schools in our county and just offer classes if they want to drop, drop in and do classes with us. But my favorite collaboration that we did, which I know a lot of people do, is we work with the students with special needs at our school. We do it throughout the year and we do classes, but in the spring when virtual hit, uh, the students and the students and I decided to do a dance party every Friday. It was the best part of virtual. Um, and they came every Friday, the, the students with um, students special needs classes and uh, my dancers, and we had a collaborative class and we learned combos, students tall, I tall, and we did full on dances. I was sweating so much with them, but it was the most fun people from the county came and just popped in, principals came, teachers came in, came in. And so I would encourage that if you have the opportunity to reach out to different programs to collaborate and make opportunities happen for your students. So the North Carolina Dance Performance Adjudication is something that is hosted every year and many people on this call have actually been to it. And this year we're gonna go virtual. This is something that could be an opportunity to um, have your students work on from the beginning. You know, we're all looking for what are we going to work towards? And we're the idea of a concert is up in the air and we just don't know what that's gonna look like. Um, this, is a, I, this is a chance to do a virtual test, you know, make one dance edited. And so it's gonna be dance film. So everyone is going to submit a dance film that would like to participate. And they will be sent off to adjudicators from universities in North Carolina, just like we usually have when it's live. It's an opportunity for students to be able to submit work if you want to do that, or you could do a class piece, or if you have a junior or senior that is looking to go to college for dance and wants to submit their solo for feedback, this is a great platform for that experience. They will get, you'll get feedback and a scoring that you'll be able to show to your school from these different uh, adjudicators. And then on November 14th, the original date, we will have a virtual live stream. Like I just showed you how I put things together. I'll put all of your dances in one. We'll have a, pre you'll be presented like you were at the show, things like that. And everybody will get to watch and give comments to each other, which is so fun virtually because you get to see them all on the side going, yes, yes, this school and that school and everything like that. So you will be able to give feedback to each other um, and then just cheer each other on. And then we will have master classes that day that you that your students will be able to sign up for as well. And then I'm also working with colleges from around our state to provide what their audition opportunity um, requirements this year are going to look like, because I'm sure they're going to look a little different. So you can do all different types of things. Sure, we can go multi-state, whatever. <laughs> so um, it's an opportunity for your students to have something to work towards. And I think it's going to be really fun and we get to support each other um, for this. Uh, let's see. I just encourage can I ask really quickly um, yes. if people are interested in this, should they just email you directly? Um, um, I will. Yes, I will. I do not have the stuff ready yet, but I will have it. On, I just have to tweak it from in person to virtual. I'll have it ready by August 21st, and I will definitely send it to you. And you can send it all out to North Carolina. And then, um, like I have all the Wake County, and I'll send it to them. And then, of course, if you're interested, for sure, send me an email, and I'll add you to my email list, and I'll send it out. Yeah, 
Yeah. So absolutely. once it's ready, we will send it out on our listserv and we will, um, we will post it on our Facebook page as well. So make sure if you want to reach out. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I, I think I lost you. All right. Okay. Yeah. So for sure. And I just think it'll be a really cool experience to see how everybody does the video film. Um, so that was a lot of information and let's see. Yeah. Oh, I did it. Um, a lot of information and I just hope that you'll look for ways to, um, just connect your students together. Uh, we are alone. The most that we've ever been alone in my opinion. Um, but we are not separate. We are alone, but we're still dancing together. And I think it is really important that we look for ways that we can create in just a new format. Now, yes, I want to be clear that I'm ready to be back with my students more than I promise, um, more than I've ever wanted anything. However, we have learned so much in this virtual platform and as a program, we've gotten to grow um closer and i've and the students have seen such a new way of leading because they have a choice they have to self-motivate every time they show up it can't just be because miss graves is watching it has to be that it's internal that they want to get it done and i told them i said because then when we're back in person it's going to be on because you're going to have all this time to be working and then we're going to get back in person and we're just going to make great art um so i just hope that you will look for ways to do that reach out to everyone there's no reason for us to you know, do our own thing and not collaborate because none of us have ever done this before. It's new. It's new for everyone. It's new for all of our students. It's new for me. It's new for you. And if we can, if we can look for ways um, to just be together, then hopefully when we are back together, we can still continue this huge collaboration with people we've never spoken to before, um, which I think is such an awesome experience. I put my contact information down there. You're welcome to email me or follow us and get ideas, steal anything you want. I'll steal your stuff, um, not your choreography, but maybe some of your ideas. And then there, these three links on the side are our virtual show. If you have time, that would make more sense than the real. So you will be able to see different types of uh, editing and some things that we added into it. And then a year in review, which the juniors last year made, which we would have never done if it wasn't for virtual, but we decided we needed to, you know, talk about our great year. And the only way to talk about our great year was to show what we did, even though we got cut short. And then a site specific, which was my top level last year, finished the year out with a site specific project. And that was something that we also wouldn't have put together if it wasn't for virtual. I appreciate you all listening. Hopefully you got something you can take back. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll stay around, of course, for questions. Thank you so much, Betsy. That was awesome. Um, let's see, we're gonna move on. Brandon, did you wanna? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we've got a little poll here just to um, reinvigorate and reconnect with you all. Now that you've heard all of Betsy's amazing mind-blowing um, ideas. Uh, you know, as an elementary music teacher, I can definitely connect to wanting my students to move even in my music class. So I'm excited to see so many of you who are here that are not even dance instructors. So um, we're excited to see what, what you guys are connecting with. Um, we've got about a minute left. This is a timed poll because I just discovered that that was a thing. So, um, yeah, in about and we do minute. have a little bit more information for you, so uh, don't worry. We have a little bit more that we're going to share, and then we'll oh, yes. open it up to uh, questions as well. Uh, my Just eyes are probably there. going everywhere. My eyes are probably going everywhere because I would see comments, and then I was looking at my screen, and I was like, I'm sure that when you walk, watch this back, I'm going to be like, but I promise <laughs> I was talking to you all. Betsy, we've actually lost your video stream. I don't know if you... Oh, there we go. There you go. Got you back. I lost your voice now, but that's okay. That's I forgot to unmute. That's something that you'll do 17 times when you're virtually teaching. So, um, <laughs> you've got about 10 seconds left. I'm sorry if it cuts you off. Uh, I think it allows you about 15 more seconds to finish up what you were typing if you are in the midst of it. And then we'll go ahead and share this out with everybody just to just to see what sparked other inspiration. Oh, 
All right. So hopefully you can see some some great ideas there that your fellow um, dance teachers have shared with you. Brandon, I don't see any of the actual answers. I only see the question. Oh no. Uh, let's see. Share, apply. Did it work? Not for me, no. Ooh. All right. Well, we try it later. <laughs> we're always learning more things. So I suppose that this will have to be one of those things that we will have to look more into. Well, thank you for your thoughts, though. If you'd like to share what inspired you in the chat, um, you are more than welcome to do so as Sayward continues on and shares some more resources to come back to on your own time. So I'm going to go through these very quickly. Um, I just want you to be aware so that you can come back to them. Um, this, this first page here, these are some additional rules for you that are related to specifically dance and SEL, social emotional learning. We've also included NCDEO's resources for culturally responsive teaching, um, some improv and choreography tasks that can be done at home, a lesson on filming for dance, and an online dance course reflection journal. So there's lots of great things there. Um, on this next page, uh, you can see some um, resources for creating um, Google Classroom. There's some checklists there for you and some great um, time-saving tips. Um, and then also some specifically arts education um, tools. We have our national organization for arts education leaders and then the teaching All right, so Sayward is in and out of power. So um, I think that she lost lost her voice capabilities. So um, just all of the awesome resources here. <laughs> um, NCMA Learn at the bottom, even though I don't let it surprise you or shock you that it's an arts um, museum resource. They have lots of dance lessons. You can just click on the subject and you can drop down to dance and you can do lots of interactive um dances that are inspired by visual art as well say word are you back with us yeah can you hear me yes i can okay perfect um so again that teaching north carolina arts project is something that we're working on the music section is done so a lot of you might actually find use in the music portion as well um but we're specifically focusing on north carolina artists and history and this resource that you can click on and find lesson plans um for all different artists um, throughout North Carolina. So the dance page for that will be coming out soon so that you can use that. Um, on the next page, you'll see some classroom um, examples uh, that some of your fellow dance teachers are doing in their classes. So we do have a video there that you can watch on your own time that has a Google Classroom overview by Kate Cummings, which uh, she is the uh, NCDEO president. There's also a uh, sample final project by Sue Hill and a sample choice board by Amanda, Amanda Arrowwood, both North Carolina educators. And I've also included a dance course shared on Canvas Commons, especially uh, useful for those of you that are using Canvas this year. On the next page, I have a snapshot of um, so, some things that I did with my classes when we went virtual at the college level. So I had students that were living all around the country. So when they went home, we were on different time zones. So time was really, um, you know, we couldn't really do things synchronously at that point because they were all over. Um, so I had to figure out how to still give them class. And I wanted to really give them some structure, but that they could make their own choices and have some autonomy with their own learning. Um, so they would choose one thing from each of these um, columns and basically create their class for the week. So they could repeat the same class three times in the week, or they could build up and do a portion of it each day. So depending on how they wanted to do, but they did have to pick something from each of these. And I gave them um, examples of concepts, examples of goals, um, different choices for warmups, or they could create their own. They could do journaling or free writing, or even go on a nature walk. Um, and then they could dive into the concepts deeper with skills and choreography projects and other types of projects. They could watch documentaries. Um, and I have lists of a lot of those things, but at the end of each week, they wrote a reflection 
And the reflection and writing was really, really important. And I saw the growth over the few weeks um, uh, really, really improve. And they started to open up quite a bit more. And then we would do um, sessions together where we would try to talk if they if they could get together during those times. But they really had to kind of create create their class themselves. On the next page, um, you'll see a couple other like sample lessons that I gave them where I lined things out if they if they didn't want to have total free reign and they needed a little bit more direction. So the first one you'll see um, is focused on Alonzo King and his philosophy. And then I have one on Tamara Rojo and a lot. They they both include classes. Uh, with videos and then also documentaries about about these uh, these two dancers and choreographers, reflection questions and extending activities. And then I have a video resource for you there that includes a lot of videos that are great to incorporate into your classes in whatever way you might find useful. On the next page, you'll see um, a sample extension uh, project. So I also did some photography projects with them and gesture projects. Um, so you'll see this uh, down on the bottom left hand side um, is actually the daughter of one of our participants on the on the call today. Um, and this was a, something that she sent me and then it inspired me to do with my students. So her daughter created these uh, replicas of famous dance um, dance photos. And then I had my students do them as well on the side. You can see the original photos and then how they tried to recreate them with things that they had at home. Um, so that that just kind of explains those projects as well. And then on the next slide, you'll see um, just where I talk about uh, using your students to help create the goals and objectives and even the syllabi and rubrics and assessments for your class and really give having them have input in um, what what the class goals are and what they're going to be assessed on. Um, and then they really feel like they have ownership of the class and input and they have a voice. Um, the latest craze around town, right, is these Bitmoji classrooms. And so also on the call, we have um, Ashley Cartledge and she uh, shared with us her uh, virtual classroom slide deck. So thank you so much, Ashley, for sharing this. You can click on that link and she's got the examples um, of what she uses. And she uses them as a template and then she goes in and just changes the content for each one. So she's got that um, set up for you to view and see as an example there. Um, and I just really loved how she has all these inspirational quotes. And knowing Ashley and knowing her classroom, she really created it to look just like her actual classroom. And I think that's really important to have that um, that sense of normalcy for the students. So we have a few additional sample Bitmoji classes coming up just for you to look at and kind of get an idea. These are shared by a couple other dance educators across the country that were willing to share these with you. And then uh, we have some information on the Bitmoji um, classes here as well. This resource here has like, I mean, hundreds of backgrounds, pieces of furniture, classroom items, and things like that that you can put into your scenes. Um, and then this is all the information that you really could need. You can join some of these groups. And we have a Bitmoji uh, session coming up next week that you can join as well. So yes, you can go to that next, at the videos on the next slide um, and, and this is just a fantastic video for you to watch to really walk you through how to do it and how to set it all up. And then a few more just resources. We have some presentation tools, some other tech tools that you might need, and then moving on to NCDEO, which is again, your, one of your best resources for dance teaching in, in the state. So really um, reach out to them and utilize all the great resources that they have coming up. All right, so we're gonna open it up now to a few minutes of Q&A. Any questions that you may have for Betsy or I, or Brandon? So I was gonna, I wrote down some, um, a few, or that came from earlier, Betsy. Mm -hmm. um, do you know of anything that is a good free video software? And could you speak to why you chose the, the video software that you chose? Yeah, for sure. So iMovie is, uh, I believe, free on like your, if you have an Apple, so you don't have to pay for that one. Final Cut Pro is not free, but it also works 
it's not just on Apple, like you can use it in different types of computers, I believe. Um, I could be wrong about that. Um, but I chose Final Cut Pro because of the fact that it can house so much more video footage inside it. Um, and it also was, um, it also just has more features. Now, I don't even know half the features. I did a lot of like, I had the YouTube up on my phone and I was on my computer and I was like watching the YouTube while I was trying to edit because I didn't know either. But so YouTube tutorials are great, but I liked how it all worked together in, um, and how it, it saved. So I just didn't have enough storage with iMovie to put a full virtual show on. So I think if your school's like, what do you need? I think that this is something that you're like, I need technology to be able to have a virtual concert, you know, like, and I can't just do it. Like, because the, I think one of the kind of, it's, it's a curse and a blessing is that, you know, a lot of people in the world are seeing all these great performances being like put out by these celebrities, you know, or different screens and it all matches up perfect. And it's just so fun and great. What they don't know is it took 20 hours to put that together. So when a school's like, can you please make that happen? And you're like, no, I, I can't make that happen by tomorrow morning. And so just making it clear like that of putting the, that you need that software, because when you have good, when you have good software, it makes it a lot um, easier to do it. Um, and then there was a question earlier about the backstage. I'm sorry, I didn't clarify that. When you're, you would have already set up, when you go in, you're gonna create a broadcast and you're gonna make sure you go live to it, but you're gonna create a broadcast and you can go ahead and schedule that broadcast and it will go straight to your YouTube and you'll have that link that you can send out as early as you want. And then they can set a reminder and then it will like tell them to go to it or they can just click on it when it's time for the show. Um, but it's really fun because they'll get a countdown and everything like that if you go to it. And then when you're backstage, you are the only one that sees that and you control that type of thing. And what you do is you have your video pulled up on your like as a tab and you will share your screen. And when you share your screen, you will um, when you share your screen, you will uh, that's what they'll see. And then you just need to make sure you press go live. Or if not, then you'll just watch it again all by yourself. So make sure you press go live. Um, awesome. We've had a couple different questions um, asking about your guest artists, whether uh, they ask to be paid, whether you had free, and, and then how you ended up facilitating that payment. Right, okay, so I um, I always pay my guest artists. Uh, some of my alums do it for free when like this, when I'm gonna do it this fall, when I would just want some alumni to come in and do some class time work, just so they see more than my face and my backside the entire year, um, they might do it for free, but all the guest artists I pay, and we pay through, um, we have Venmo through our boosters, but you also can cut a check and email it to them and things like that, not email, that would not make sense, mail it to them, <laughs> email that check and see how that works, um, <laughs> mail the check, but you also could, um, also, some people are giving discounted rates. My my people definitely gave me discounted rates, but I'm going to tell you, I think that teaching virtually is just as hard and just as beneficial as teaching in person. So I don't think that just because it's virtual, they should get paid less. So because you're not having to for travel. So yeah. Can Before I add I in? Leaves. Hold on just a second. I'm going to yeah. drop the um, survey link into the chat. So before anyone leaves, if you guys can make sure that you fill out your survey on your way out. Um, that is what is going to auto generate your certificate for your CEUs for being here today. So do make sure that you fill out that that survey in order to uh, get your CEUs. Sorry, go ahead. Also, Kat, also Catherine, I, we can talk about what I pay my master teachers and how I figure that out. Just email me. We can like, I can give you like an idea of what I pay them. I'm gonna add, um, I had about 12, um, professional dancers and, and even actors that uh, joined in on my classes um, to just to do interviews. So not, not necessarily to teach a class, but they all um, were willing to just talk to my students about auditions and careers and what the certain companies that they dance with are like. Um, you know, we had we had dancers from some really big companies um, and and directors and choreographers um, and even some dancers on Broadway. And they were saying, yeah, this is a great time for me to talk to your students because I don't really have a whole lot else going on. And so they were really excited to talk to students and reach out to them and be sort of a network um, for them uh, in that career aspect. So I think don't be afraid to reach out to you know people that you went to school with or that you graduated with or friends that you know are are in 
the field because a lot of times they might be willing to at least just talk to your students if you can't afford to pay for a master class. An interview might be might be a way to get around that. Right, and about halfway through the pro um, in March, I brought in some guest artists that we really just like, and um, that had taught that had were supposed to be their guest artists for the spring, and they said a whole piece, but then they didn't get to perform it, you know. And so they came to just one of our classes and just talked for the entire hour. They just had a discussion with them, and it was so awesome for these students to feel like, oh, I'm just having, I'm just talking to these artists that are sitting in New York. And so it was just, um, I think making panels, like Sayward said, is really um, positive in different ways. There's so many artists out there that have great experiences with film dance film and so bring a panel in to talk about how to edit better you know like that's what we're going to do at the beginning of our year because i only know as much as like youtube and my students have taught me so i'm going to bring people in to make us better um so i actually reached out to um the the lead in west side story on broadway and um we had mutual friends but we had never met and i saw the show a few months prior and i just found her on facebook and sent her a message and said would you be willing to talk to my students and she was just overjoyed to talk to them um so you just never know you know you might as well try to reach out and then see um who's willing to help Oh, for sure. And definitely like reach out to each other, you know, like if I'm bringing someone in, it doesn't have to be exclusive to me. If you want to be like, hey, I saw that. Would you let my students be a part of it? Then yeah, just reach out. Um, so Lacey Louder asked about um, how to best connect virtually with students who you have not met. Um, I'll just tell you what my plan is and I've not done this yet, so I have no idea if it's going to be successful or not. Um, but the family groups are the first thing my students are. I'm getting my class list and we're going to go ahead and make the family groups from the beginning. And then during these orientation weeks, I'm going to have parent meetings. Um, my parents asked me to do this for each class to make sure I get the right contact information. Because once you have the right contact information, you can do that. And then we're making packets together. We're putting packets together. And we are, this is secret, even though it's not about to be secret because I'm live. Um, and we are going to do drive-by parades to um, our freshmen, um, welcoming them to the program. So, like, nobody will get out of their car. We'll be completely socially distanced and things like that because I'm very, I'm doing definitely going by all the rules. Um, and so we're gonna do drive-by parades like people have been doing, and we're gonna be like, welcome to Broughton. And then they will get their own little sign that says like, my first day of Broughton dance and take a picture. And then that will be like their first day of class, so. Um, but that's just like getting, trying to like get the whole idea of like community and things like that. And then my students, and then we're gonna have first week of class, we're gonna have some um, classes led by seniors that anybody can join in just to get people moving again before we start class. Trying to hit as many people as we can. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Yeah, fantastic. Lots of good questions. So I saw in the chat, it was mentioned a little bit about um, the virtual drama games session that we have coming up as well. And it is, I mean, she uses a lot of movement and improv exercises that I would use in every single one of my classes in the first day or first week. And it's an amazing way to um, experience that connection through the screen. Um, so I highly suggest it for dance teachers as well. And it's about just creating a community and an ensemble feeling right off the bat from the first week. All right, so um, that's pretty much going to wrap us up for today. We will stay on if you have additional questions. Um, so just go ahead and you've already done it a little bit, but if you want to share again, like what's got you excited? What are you going to do now? Some ideas that you maybe have with your peers. We also have these two documents that you can share specific lesson ideas that you might have or ideas for your class. And um, they are there's one where you can share your lessons and then one where you can view um, ideas that other people have submitted through all of our webinars upcoming. So you can look at other people's ideas and see if there's something you might want to adapt or or uh, borrow from. So we are super happy that all of you joined us today. Make sure that you uh, fill out your survey to uh, get your certificate for your CEUs to take to your principals and um, get that survey right there on that link again and uh feel free to reach out to us at any time brandon and i are both here to support you in whatever you might need we're happy to brainstorm with you we're happy to talk through your specific needs and situation we can get on a call with you for 30 minutes or so and just talk through you know anything that you're you're wanting to 
get some ideas for. So um, feel free to reach out. Our emails again are on the, the next page here. And you can get with us at, at any point that you would like. And we thank you so much for joining us today again. I was just going to add just a few things. Um, you can always receive CEUs for all of the archived um, webinars as well. So if you have just found out that you are now teaching in Google Classroom or in Canvas, um, we have sessions on those. We have sessions on using Pear Deck. We have sessions on, I don't even remember, uh, lesson planning. Now, that was definitely one of my favorites so far. Um, so if you go back into any of those, when you complete your survey, you will be directed to your CEU certificate. Um, and then the just a reminder that the slide deck, all of these slides are, are available at the bit.ly link at the bottom of every slide. And it will also, tonight, we will send you an email with links to the slide deck, the survey, and the recording, as well as the webinar archive for anything else that might, um, or you might be interested in. And if you are interested in um, leading a webinar, you are welcome to email Sayward about a dance webinar as well. Yes, we'd love to get um, a larger panel um, together. And I know a lot of you are, are interested in sort of, um, as Carrie's saying, the, the beginner level or elementary level either. Um, any of that, so if whatever you are interested in, if you feel like you have something to share, we would love to get another panel together and um, do another one of these. So feel free to reach out if you have some ideas.